many students have been asking me what is the right way or the better way to solve the JE mains paper. Well, let me tell you, there are some proven techniques which you can actually utilize in the examination hall that will help you boost your score like anything. Because if your strategy for solving the JE paper is not right, you will end up getting those negative marks. So avoid those negative marks and use the time to get more marks, solve more questions, which will give you better rank, better college, and obviously a branch of your choice. That's why you should watch this video till the end. And these techniques, what I am going to give you are those ones which I have been training my kids with and my kids have been doing extremely well in the J mains paper. And that's why you see many of my students in the top notch colleges in the country. So let's see what those techniques are. And before that, make sure you smash that like button down there and also subscribe to the only J English channel in the country, your Vedantu J English, right? So let's hear what your captain has to say and what are those hidden tricks and tips before the exam, which you can apply for your paper solving strategy. Let's hear it. The first one, also called as the zeroth trick because it's the most important one. Always live in the present. You might have seen a batsman always focuses on the current ball, does not think about the previous one or doesn't think about the next bowler also. Same applies to the exam. Don't think about the last question. Was it good? Was it bad? Don't get happy. Don't get depressed. Don't even think about the next one because your complete focus and concentration should be on the current one. And once you go to the next one, forget about the previous. That's the strategy that you're going to follow throughout the paper for all the, all the questions. Now, I'm going to show you a very interesting graph which you never have seen before. The orange line is the power to solve a question versus time. And the pink line is basically your silly mistakes which you do in the exam versus time. Initially, when you enter the hall and you start the paper, you're just warming up and you are hesitating and you have some nervousness. So that's the reason why your brain is not functioning fully, but decently enough. And you might make some silly mistakes. As you get used to the environment, your ability to solve the questions increases and your chances of making mistakes decreases. And as you go towards the end, your brain is getting tired. You are getting nervous. That's why your ability decreases. But chances of making mistakes starts increasing drastically because you might make a mistake in that haste. So how to use this graph? Whenever you are deciding to solve a difficult question or a difficult subject, keep it in the middle, somewhere over here, not towards the end, because you can see you can get a lot of negative marks and you can keep it in the middle also, but there is a good chance you might perform the best if you keep it somewhere over here. You can choose a medium subject over here or a medium question over here usually and you can keep the easy ones over here also. But there is a risk of keeping easy ones towards the end. If you do not get enough time, then you might lose out marks on all those easy ones. So it is safe to keep the easy questions towards the beginning. Always make sure your first two to three questions are the easiest ones or confidence booster ones. That means you should never lose confidence in the first three questions because then you will be scared for the rest of the exam. You can always find such questions. So take a minute or two to find those questions. It's not important that you solve the questions in the sequential order. No matter how many mock tests you give, no matter how many instruction sheets you have read before, always read the sheets or the instruction which is given on the screen before the exam in the examination hall, right? And there might be also some instructions which is given in the brochure or your admit card. Read them and follow them because all your energy should be used for solving questions. You want to make sure all the formalities, paperwork happens smoothly or else you will be confused. You are thinking about so many other things which went wrong when you came to the hall or you are not able to find out where to go to the next question, how to come back to the question. You are not able to understand should I submit. You are not able to understand where is the time left. All these confusions should not be there. If you have doubts, raise your hand, ask the supervisor inside the hall. He is obliged. It's his duty to explain you if you are not able to understand something. Okay. So follow these instruction sheets properly, which will come in your examination hall. Right. 
then most important thing which subject to solve first everybody has their own personal preferences one such preference which generally i tell my students is start with chemistry then go to physics then go to maths that's the most popular one another popular technique which is used by many students is they start with you know physics then chemistry and then go to maths that's also a very good way of or order of solving uh, you know uh, the j mains paper some people also like this chemistry first then mathematics and then physics towards the end now i'll tell you what is the advantage of keeping mathematics in the uh, middle is that your brain is most active chances of making mistakes are less and usually maths papers are slightly more difficult so if you do mathematics part in the middle chances are you might be able to complete or do many questions but the risk is if you don't keep a track of time you will not have enough time for the last section or the last subject so keep a track of time if you leave that time then it is a very good strategy and the advantage of doing chemistry first is that chemistry usually is easy ncert based direct questions are there and because of that you might gain a lot of confidence plus it does not take more than uh, 35 minutes to 45 minutes to complete the entire chemistry paper that way you have more time for mathematics and then physics all right okay having said that make sure that whatever time you are allocating for each subject leave 15 minutes towards the end and the first 5 minutes that's out of the subjects slot because the first 5 minutes will just go for warming up and the last 15 minutes like i showed you in the graph making mistakes are uh, chances of making mistakes are really high so leave those last 15 minutes those 15 minutes you can review some questions or you can do only those questions from any subject which you know for sure now there is one more strategy which you can use and that is solving all the easy questions first from all the subjects then solving all the hard questions in the most efficient zone and then towards the end do the medium questions that is also going to help you a lot in solving the papers now if you're not sure which strategy is going to work for you you can practice these strategies in the mock test if you want mock test well i have put five such amazing mock tests in the link which is there in the description box which says you know free test papers these are proper j means paper with the current pattern solve these papers they are absolutely free of cost click on the link enter your login details and you will see that uh, papers are available for 0 rupees click buy now and you will get those five papers in the exact nta pattern so you'll feel like actually you are giving a j mains mock test in the examination hall right so check out the link in the description box and give these mock tests absolutely free of cost now often it happens that you get tired solving a subject it's perfectly okay you can switch over to another subject it will refresh your mind maybe uh, you like physics a lot so you are solving chemistry and you are getting bored it's okay you can come to physics solve few questions gain some confidence come back maybe maths is your strong point you can do the same with maths also so switch over between subjects the moment you feel that you are getting tired or you need a change or you feel that the paper is only difficult i need to switch on you can always come back to the subject which you are left very important is always try to see the options many students just read the question don't see the options and try solving it sometimes it might happen that you don't even have to calculate completely looking at the options only you know the value must lie between this and this you can eliminate some options sometimes the dimensions only are wrong and you can choose the options properly always look at the options and very important read the question carefully see if it says not correct incorrect are not true or false these words are going to cause a lot of marks if you don't read them properly and always use some really cool methods for eliminating not just you know dimension analysis and value based things sometimes you might see that substituting some values might yield some very very large or very very small you know number which is completely unrealistic that way you know if the value is this then the problem doesn't make sense so that way you can eliminate some options okay so having said that make sure that your rough work is very very clear and legible i'm not saying neat like boards you don't have to sit and underline your rough work but make sure if you are solving a question it is not 
overflowing on the next question because chances of silly mistakes are highest because of bad rough work and you are mixing and you know writing everything at the same place also the advantage of a neat rough work is that let's say you are not able to solve a question now you leave that question you go to the next one and after some time you decide to come back now you don't know where you had solved it it would have happened with you so make sure that at least you know where you solve all the questions or you are solving it one below the other that way you can easily find where you had solved it and start from where you left that way you will save a lot of time or else you have to redo the entire thing again right now another proven technique for solving questions in je paper is that let's say you are stuck in a question now obviously it will happen more than one time then what do you do don't waste more time immediately decide to go to the next question or the next subject solve 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 keep solving suddenly you will realize something oh my god this is the formula that i should have used in that problem you will immediately realize your mistake or realize some formula come back to that question come back to that question solve it and then go ahead and repeat this process wherever you get stuck so whenever you get stuck it's okay to leave and come back after some time when suddenly you remember something okay it will help you at least with two to three questions keep this in mind next important thing is you know your rule number 8 give many mock tests and that too in the same time cycle if you know that you know your test timings are from this to this make sure at least few days before you start giving mock tests exactly at the same time and if you do not know when your slot is going to be it's okay you can give the exam at both the timings because you don't know which your slot will be so your mind will be active in both the slots because if you have the habit of sleeping or lazing around or playing then your mind will tell you at that exact same time hey let's chill your concentration power will go down chances of making mistakes will go up so your biological clock will be should be tuned and when you are giving the exam also train your body physically to not frequently drink water or go to the toilet or you know unnecessary wastage of time so make sure that your mental clock and your uh, physical bi biological clock are tuned with the exam timings the next important thing is you have to analyze your mistakes the tests that you are going to give for free you will see that there will be a report card generated with a nice analysis sheet which will tell you how your accuracy was subject wise topic wise and so much more so analyze that these are your strengths these are your weaknesses this is the time when you make most mistakes this is the time when you make the least mistakes it could change from person to person so use that to your advantage you know your accuracy is this much so you know your guess work is not going to work so make sure that you make those calculated guesses you know physics or chemistry or maths is your strong point accordingly react and put that subject in priority first because every person has a different mindset so use those analysis sheet just don't see the total score and your predicted rank that is of no use you have to deep dive you have to see each and every detail why am i doing mistakes here why is this topic always difficult for me is there some one shot which i can see and clear out all my doubts so that's the thing which you can still do just before the exam and like they say you know always keep calm be like a proton and stay positive just like the charge of the proton is positive stay positive never ever watch negative videos never ever watch negative content stay motivated be with positive people inculcate those positive feelings when you are vibing properly you will see automatically you will do well in the exam use all these tricks and all these strategies in the exam hall and come out and tell me how it worked for you in fact apply it in the mock test only and tell me how it worked for you you will see a drastic change in your performance all right so god bless you all take care my dear warriors and do not forget to share this video and like this video share it with all your friends and your classmates bye bye assalamu alaikum captain shreya signing off